I've been meaning to do a review of this program for a while. This is the free version of iSpring's QuizMaker. They say quiz and survey maker because you can also do surveys with it. And it allows you to construct quizzes on verifiable facts that you can then upload to your website in the form of Shockwave flash files. And it will do the HTML for you automatically. And this is not to be confused with the demo version, because there's a demo version and a free version. And you can see there the demo is a 14-day trial with all the features of the full version. And here they have a review of the full version. The free version is still very good, though. I use it all the time to memorize things, and that's really where it excels. It's very good for memorizing facts, essentially, if you have to pass a test or something like that. But as you can see, the full version has a lot more intricacy to it. The downside is that it's rather expensive. The price is 370 US dollars for a basic license. Here I'm going to demonstrate the free quiz maker by making a test about noble gases. So we have the periodic table here and there are the noble gases. But the last element there, organicin, if I'm pronouncing it right, is not actually a noble gas in spite of its position. So it gives me the chance to put in some trick questions into the test. It's actually quite reactive, and it's not even a gas, although they originally thought it was. It's the most recently discovered element, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong about the history there. And here, noble gases are explained. Helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. And I'm going to make the test mostly about the atomic numbers there. See, 2, 10, 18, 36, 54, and 86. Organicin is 118. And you can see I've done a bunch of other quizzes in the program already, but I'm going to create a new one for the noble gases because I felt I should start from scratch and I should do something very simple. So you can do true-false questions, multiple-choice questions, and multiple-response questions if you're constructing a quiz. And you notice the survey question is over there or to the right of it. This design has been changed slightly in version 6.2. This is version 6.0.1 because I wasn't sure how well 6.2 would run on my computer. But mostly 6.2 has social media accounts integrated into it. That's the main addition to it. So here, the first noble gas, helium, atomic number two. So you put in the question, and then you have two or more answers below. I've never found a maximum number of potential answers for the multiple choice questions. The question is more, how many answers do you want to put into your test in each question? Consistency is maybe a good idea so that you have a more scientific result. But if you put in too many potential answers, it also becomes very time-consuming, and it's also that many more clues that you inadvertently add, you could argue. The hardest questions you can set up, in my experience, are the multiple response questions, if you have a relatively complicated subject. I only put one into this test just to demonstrate that you can do it. Here with the atomic number questions, which are the core of this test, I first say this noble gas is an atomic number of X, whatever. And then I put a list of noble gases, incomplete, below, which by itself kind of gives it away to some extent. But I wanted to stick to four answers, because that's generally my habit. And then I did the reverse of these, as you'll see in a minute, where I name the noble gas and then ask the test taker to give the number.
The free version doesn't seem to support write-in answers. I should add that. So if you wanted to challenge your user, I suppose you'd have to get the full version. So... some reason I was hesitating here. One cool feature that is included in the free version is that you can give pictures as potential answers. Or as part of the question. So if you wanted to do facial recognition of historic figures, that would be one thing that you could do. I have considered setting up a test based on that. Because it occurs to me I often know the names of people, but not faces, or faces but not names. And it makes me look really stupid, actually. But I suspect a lot of people are like that. Unless you're talking about somebody like Albert Einstein, most people won't know the face of somebody famous. Notice I made a little typo there, and as you'll see in a moment, fixing that is as simple as jumping back to the question. Because you see a little preview of each of your questions over there on the left, and that also serves as your menu to jump to each of them. Now here's my trick question. Of course, like I said, this has the typo in it up above that I'm going to fix. But this is a trick question, although the none of the above down there kind of makes it easy because none of the others have it. Again, this is not really a test I'm going to release as far as I can tell. This is just a demonstration. I wouldn't compose it that way if I were actually using this as a teacher. It's just too easy. Unless, of course, I added other answers for the other questions, saying, well, such and such is not a noble gas, when in fact it is. Another tricky thing is that when you're writing blanks, and this is something that I missed initially when I did this, is you want to put in the same number of spaces to the blank, just for the sake of tidiness. See, I made it too long there. But of course, when you duplicate, notice I'm using the duplicate button up there to duplicate the old questions and turn them into the second questions. That saves you the trouble of going through your notes if you don't really have this data memorized, if you're like the teachers of Springfield and The Simpsons. If you remember the episode where... Lisa stole all the teacher's editions, and one of the teachers asked if anybody knew the multiplication table. In any case, I've run out of time. I have to switch to part two here.